The biggest names in sports are all on IsraelSportsRadio.com. Hello? Hi, is this Chris Wallace? Yes, it is. Hi, this is Ari Lewis from IsraelSportsRadio.com. You're live in the air. How are you doing out there? Fine, thank you. Well, for those just joining us, we're speaking with the general manager of the Memphis Grizzlies, Chris Wallace. Trip to Israel. Tell us what else you did on that uh, trip and how much uh, that's well, we were we were part of a... Um group called Sports Power Plus uh, of uh, committed Christian uh, basketball players, for, uh, professional players, former professional players like Alan Houston, uh, for example, uh, Anthony Bonner, uh, guys that have been in the NBA, some current players internationally and uh, MBDL, and uh, we, we put on um, some clinics, and, and but more, we spent more of our time touring. It was under the auspices of APAC, and uh, we learned a great deal about uh, Israel, the uh, challenges facing her in terms of security, and it really gave me even a greater appreciation uh, for my favorite country outside of the United States. I'd made eight prior trips, excuse me, seven prior trips, but none as informative and as overall rewarding as that trip. Well, that's great to hear, and I'm glad that, not only did you take your time out of your schedule to visit Israel, I certainly hope everyone in America listening. Well, we came back last summer, too, for my ninth trip. Oh, wow. And okay. I'm hoping, hoping to get here if things break right in the fall for trip number 10 this in the coming months. Oh, okay. All right. We'll certainly have to meet up again. If I know you're busy, but uh, it was just uh, so much fun meeting you because a lot of times people see things in the media, they get scared, or they see it on CNN, what have you. They don't come to Israel. So tell everyone in America listening that they have nothing to be afraid of and they should come on and visit. There's no question all about it. They should come. You're, 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 you're no worse off from a, a potential risk standpoint than you are in the United States, yes, uh, to be honest with you. And uh, it, it's just such a rewarding trip. The security's no, no better anywhere in the world. But just get beyond you know, the, the security aspect and the current events. There's no country in the world that inch for inch offers a history in relevance to this day of Israel. If you take the old city of Jerusalem, I, I, I tell people here from the Memphis area who haven't been to Jerusalem to put it in their perspective. The, you're familiar with the SEC uh, conference in college sports sure. here in the United States. Well, the old city of Jerusalem, the way I ex- explain it is it's about the size of an SEC college campus. <laughs> and yet there's been no piece of ground in the history of the world uh, that has been more coveted, more fought over, and is more relevant in in the play and to, to, and, and, and dictates world affairs to this day than the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, and so I just find uh, I, I just find it exhilarating any time I can walk uh, through those stone streets in the old city and, and and anywhere in Israel. There's just just countless places to go that. Uh, historical interest, and, and it's a happening modern-day country, too. And I feel like when I'm in Tel Aviv that uh, I'm in uh, Miami or Los Angeles, except the, many of the signs are in Hebrew. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'll tell you, I'm glad you're saying this stuff because you're pumping me up. I was in the old city today, and I don't want to say I don't appreciate it, but sometimes I don't think I recognize the historical value and the whole value in general of the old city. So sometimes uh, it, it takes me hearing that to, to really appreciate it. So uh, thank you very much for yeah, that. Don't take for granted what you have there now. No, 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 absolutely, God forbid. And, uh, again, I, I really appreciate those words. Uh, one of the things I want to get to before we get into uh, your work with the Grizzlies, you were the general manager of the Celtics when they drafted Paul Pierce. So you picked Paul at, I believe, number 10. Well, that, that was a team after uh, okay. uh, Rick Pitino, our coach at that time, was president and okay. was uh, over top of the whole organization. That was a 1998 draft. Right, um, and Paul Pierce unexpectedly slipped to the tenth position, and was literally a gift from the heavens for the <laughs> Celtics. He's absolutely uh, going to. You know, he, he's a player that uh, I believe right now he currently is second overall in career scoring uh, with the Celtics, and, and that's a, a very illustrious list of players that are on their all-time scoring list. I don't think there's any question he'll have his jersey retired and one day hung. Uh, in the rafters, raised to the rafters of the Boston Garden. And and I also believe you'll see him a plaque with his name inscribed upon it also in the future in Springfield, Massachusetts, at the Basketball Hall of Fame. That's a that's a caliber player, and, 
and the productivity he's had throughout his career, which uh, what's now thirteen years. Uh, right, ninety-eight to two. No, uh, fourteen. Yes, fourteen. Because ninety-eight was the long yeah, year. Short. Yeah, math's not real good. So he, <laughs> uh, you know, he stood the test of time. He, he's an all-time Celtics great. So obviously, uh, that was a very beneficial draft pick to the franchise. Okay, um, and does anyone know why he slipped to ten? I mean, looking it over at the night. Well, part it, 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 it's partly due to what we, I would call the process. So, you know, we're in the age of pre-draft workouts, not only in the NBA, but you hear so much about the pre-draft workouts of the NFL. And you, know, you have guys running around cones and do vertical jumping, and Paul's not a great athlete in those terms. And there was also some pretty good players in that draft, particularly some that um, came into play late in, uh, in the process and got teams excited, for example, like a Dirk Davitsky. And uh, it, it doesn't take a great deal. Let's say you're projected the top three or four. They end up sliding down if you get out of that point. You know, some teams don't may not need someone at your position or they don't think they do at that time. Their depth chart uh, doesn't indicate that. Uh, maybe they have a, a particular player hasn't worked out for a team, and they won't take a player that hasn't worked out. So, uh, I think if it was the, the workouts. Paul, from what I heard, he didn't work out for us. We didn't worry about that. I don't think he had great workouts. Now, he had a great career. He's had a great career so far. Yeah, so it shows you how important the workouts are. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, a lot of teams get kicking themselves that that year. The number one pick was Michael O'Kenny. I mean, wow. and no offense to, to Michael, but he, you know he's no Paul Pierce. So. Uh, I'm glad to hear from the inside. Well, ironically, the two best out of that draft, when you look back at, and judge the body of work for their the totality of their careers, with the ninth pick, Dirk Nowitzki, and the tenth, Paul Pierce. That's right. That's right. Dirk was in that draft too. Also slipped a little bit. It's funny to do it over. They'd be one and two respectively. You could argue who uh, would be one over the other. But uh, it is weird sometimes we look back at drafts and you think, why did this player go down and go up? And so I certainly appreciate the, that inside information. Now, uh, this will sound kind of a basic question, but we have a lot of people listening, so I want them to know kind of the, the scoop. Uh, as far as a trade occurring, sometimes it's just someone calls up and says, hey, I need a point guard, and, and you say, well, or hey, I need this, or hey, I need that, or you're with someone, at a buddy at a restaurant, and he's a general manager of the other team. How, does, how do trades uh, formulate, if you well, will? Well, the, the seeds which bloom in the trades are planted many different ways. Uh, sometimes you'll read about a team that's having a problem with a player. Maybe he doesn't want to be there. Uh, there's a contractual issue uh, looming. Uh, there's something that's going to cause that player probably not to be with his current team long term. And then you say, hey, wait a minute. Well, we could use that guy. They could possibly use what we have. And then that sparks a discussion. Uh, oftentimes, you just are randomly calling throughout the league and covering bases of all the 29 teams that an opportunity presents itself. Or, and, and sometimes it's very specific and targeted where, hey, we need a point guard. They look like they have an abundance of point guard. Let's go see if there's something we can do. Uh, but you have to remember, it's a very small number of, of teams in the NBA. It's only 30. And all the salary information is very readily available to all the teams and easy to access. So there are really no secrets, and uh, there's only 440 players or give or take a few at any particular time in the NBA. So there's no secrets. So if, if a player has a problem, every other team knows it very quickly. Uh, it, it, it's not a difficult league to stay on top of simply because the numbers aren't overwhelming. Okay. Okay. So, uh, again, we appreciate the information. Now, Rafael was chomping at the bit to talk about the game last night, but before I let him do that, I just want to mention that – uh, last year, again, great playoff run, and I'm sure Rafa will get to that as well the, the, uh, with the upset of, of the Spurs. And I kind of say that, hey, your trip to Israel, that might have been a little uh, karma, if you will. We call it maybe something else in Hebrew. But, uh, and it worked again. You know, you were coming on today, and then you guys won last night. So uh, <laughs> th- there might be something there. Well, I'm, I'm a believer in good karma. <laughs> uh, I'll take all the good karma the good spirits, good wishes, uh, all that you can hand out there in any fashion or form. Last night was a much-needed win for our team. We had a, uh, a very difficult loss to digest in game one uh, of the series with the Clippers where we were up 21 points at the end of three quarters, uh, and we were outscored by 22. Uh, everything that went wrong, could, that could go wrong, went wrong over the last seven minutes of change. 
and it was the biggest comeback by a team in the, in the NBA playoffs since 2000, ironically, when my Boston Celtics That's at that right. time came back at home against New Jersey mm-hmm. and won game three. Very difficult loss, uh, but our fans and, and our players rallied, uh, had a strong bounce-back performance uh, yesterday. Uh, Zach Randolph was, was, was looking like his old self from a year ago when he was dominant in the playoffs. Uh, uh, did some terrific things around the basket. You know, Rudy Gay's a given for us. He's, he's going to go get 18 to 20 some points every night. And Mike Conley was 11 to 12 for the free throw line, which is very important. So this is going to be a great series. The, the, the Clippers have a very deep, athletic and talented team led by, you know, arguably the best point guard in hand, Chris Paul, uh, who, who was on his A game last night offensively. So, uh, I think there's plenty of fireworks yet to come in the remaining games. Hi, Chris. It's uh, Rafael. I want to thank you again for joining us today. Uh, it's great to have you on. My pleasure. I uh, want to talk to you more about the game uh, last night. You know, I'll talk about more about the first game. As a GM, uh, you know, losing that game, do you think to yourself, well, you know, through, through the first three quarters, we, we dominated them so that, do you, I mean, do you take the positives out of a game like that? Do you try and look back and say, okay? Well, you, you try to take the positives, and you have to keep in mind that a series, which you know, we're operating on the series uh, standard in the NBA, you got to win four games in any particular series. It's not one and done like in the NCAA tournament, college basketball, or the Super Bowl. You know, you know give an example. Uh, I was a fan of the New England Patriots when I was in Boston, and they had that miraculous Super Bowl win over St. Louis in 2002 as a big underdog. I don't think they could have won that if that world if that Super Bowl was best of seven, and four of the games were in St. Louis. I don't think they could have accomplished that. But in the, with a one and done, anything can happen. Um, so we have to keep in mind that a loss, no matter how devastating, is still just one loss. And as long as you're not eliminated, you haven't uh, suffered the four losses. You're still alive. And so you have to take every game as it comes, every possession, and focus in the here and now and, and, and control what you could control, which was last night. So now we're back one-to-one. Uh, we don't have the home court advantage right now, but we have to go out somewhere over the three games that are scheduled in L.A. and take that home court edge back. I, absolutely. I mean, you guys had a, had a great game last night. I, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, Mike Conley because I actually was in Indiana at the time. He was a point guard at Lawrence North with Greg Oden. And, you know, there's all these funny rumors in Bloomington where I lived that uh, they, at the time I think, yeah, Mike Davis was the coach. And uh, Mike Davis didn't want to get my said, I only want Greg Oden. I don't even want Mike Connolly. And, and it's just funny to see how that ended up working out. Of course, Mike Connolly went to Ohio State, teamed up with Oden. They went to the Final Four, uh, was drafted, I think, in the top by you guys at, at number four. So number three, was it, Ari? Number four, number four in the 2007 draft. Right. Uh, behind uh, Oden went one, uh, Durant right. went two to Oklahoma City, and the third pick was Al Horford. He's become an all star. And he's greatly missed right now by the Atlanta Hawks in their playoff series with Boston. Absolutely, but I mean, it was a, a smart guy. It's just it's so interesting to see how those stories happen. You know, a guy who uh, Indiana basketball didn't give a lot of faith in, and because I think Greg Golden was thinking of going to IU, and then he said, "No, I only, I only will go with uh, Connolly." So I just, I don't know. I thought that was a pretty interesting story to talk about with you. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about: uh, your your team has the only Iranian national. Uh, in the NBA, of course, we're in Israel. There's all that stuff going on with Israel. I just wanted to uh, learn, how do you guys scout a guy like that? How did you guys scout uh, Hamed uh, Haddadi? Well, well the, the basketball world is, is a very small sphere. Um, Hamed Haddadi was playing for the, na- the Iranian national team. Right. Uh, I believe it was the summer of 2008. And the NBA arranged for that national team to play in the, uh, I believe it's called the Rocky Mountain Review. Uh, or the, No, I think it's just the Utah Summer League, excuse me, in Salt Lake City. Um, and so they were playing, and we had a guy who was working for us, Gordy Chiesa, a former college coach at Providence, among other spots, who was out there counting that Summer League. And he said, hey, this guy's interesting. He's huge, obviously. He can block shots. If he would have been an American college basketball, I think he easily would have been a first-rounder. So we step up and take notice, and then his team goes over to China, 
in the Jones Cup, a pre-Olympic tournament there in 2008. And he had big games against some guys that are in the NBA. And, you know, our owner was very encouraging of uh, Michael Heisley to take the risk. Uh, he said, hey, I haven't gotten where I am in the business world, which is, you know, you know one of the richest men in the United States and the world and has a conglomerate over 45 com- companies. He started from nothing. He said, I didn't get to where I am in business by not taking risks. Let's take a shot on this guy. And Hamid does not get great playing time with us, but he is a factor when he plays. He can block shots, uh, rebound, play big around the basket. Uh, he has a surprisingly effective left hand, and he's a crowd favorite of our Grizzly fans at FedEx Forum in Memphis when he gets in the game. Right, and, you know, it's funny. I remember watching a game uh, with the Cavs against uh, your Grizzlies, and it was just really interesting to see Caspi on the floor with uh, Hamed, you know, with all the stuff going on in the world. Uh, but, it's, you know, it's important to realize that that's between the governments and not between the people. We had the pleasure of having uh, Arash Markazi, who is also Iranian from uh, ESPN LA, uh, two days ago. And we really spent a lot of the interview talking about how, you know, what's going on right now in the world is between the governments and people are people and you should respect everyone. So I just uh, thought it'd be an that's right. I, 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 You know, I keep my relationship with Hamid on a, on a, on a basketball uh, personal basis, you know, not geopolitical. Uh, you know, neither of us, uh, you know, you know, really have any power to control those events. Exactly. And, and he, he's a delightful man who has helped our team, uh, in the spot duty he's received in the last four years. And, you know, again, is a favorite of our fans. Uh, so far he hasn't played in the two games of the Clippers series. The matchups haven't really dictated that he get on the floor. But if he does get on the floor, well, he'll produce. He always does. Absolutely. And uh, the next thing I want to talk to you about, you were in Boston, of course, as a general manager, and now you're in Memphis. What is it like going from, uh, you know, East Co- as East Coast as it gets, you know, New York, Boston area, all the way to, to Memphis? I mean, it's a great city. I was there uh, this past summer. It's a really fun place to be, great food. Uh, but what was it like making that transition from a city like well, Boston? Well, I've moved around a great deal, and I'm from a town of 8,000 people in West Virginia. Right. You know, I, did, I didn't grow up next to Central Park of Manhattan or anything. Yeah. So the 10 years that we spent in Boston were extremely rewarding, both from a professional and personal standpoint. Boston is one of the great cities in the world, and, and the suburban areas are fantastic. Uh, but you, you have to be prepared not just in the NBA, but in any walk of life to make, make a move from time to time uh, to further your career, to take another opportunity that might be better suited for you at a particular time. And when I had the opportunity to come to Memphis, even as difficult as it was to leave Boston, I didn't hesitate uh, because I thought this would be a fantastic opportunity. And, and I'd always had a desire to live in the deep south and like this city when I came in and out on my scouting travels, and it hasn't disappointed at all. I think Memphis is a terrific city. My family and I love it here. It's also the foremost basketball city in the south. It's been renamed Hoop City here in the last year. Uh, because the Memphis Tigers collegiate program is very strong. Uh, we were went deep into the playoffs last year with the Grizzlies, and the, 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 there's a rich basketball tradition at all levels here in the city of Memphis. Yeah, and yeah, that's a great point. We actually had the pleasure of interviewing uh, Josh Pastor, and that was a lot of fun. It was right uh, before the NCAA. Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's, he's made a great impact on our city and uh, is very popular, and his program is uh, the interest level here is, is as great as it is in any college program around the country. You've had you know, some big time players come out of the high school ranks here. You know, Anthony Penny Hardaway, for example. Uh, it's very strong high school basketball here. And the, on the professional level, uh, prior to the Grizzlies' arrival as, as the first NBA team in Memphis in 2001, there were NBA teams. Right. Uh, back when that league was rolling, now, the Memphis Tams, particularly, they believe we have. On I believe five occasions, worn Memphis Tams green and gold throwback uniforms. Um, so again, even though this is football country in the in in the Deep South, uh, this particular area, Memphis in the in, in the surrounding region, uh, is it, definitely a stronghold for basketball as well. Yeah, and I understand that you guys have sold uh, out all your playoff games going into last year. And you guys have a tremendous uh, fan base. I know when I was visiting in Memphis, I was in the house of the people we were visiting all over the house. They had uh, Shane Battier jerseys and, and that kind of stuff. So I know the fans there are very loyal. And the last year you guys has had, I mean, amazing run. Such an amazing run that I'd, I'd stay up sometimes till uh, 6 in the morning to watch you guys play over here in Israel. 
Well, we appreciate your support. We, we're we eager to cultivate new Grizzly fans wherever they are, even in, you know, in a far-flung location like Israel. They don't have to just be here in the Mid-South. Right, and you know, uh, we've had a lot of guys on our program who played uh, who played college basketball in the United States and now are pro- playing professionally in Israel, and a lot of those guys are from Memphis, and uh, it's really remember that Ari. We we had uh, Adrian Banks on who played, who's pretty much a superstar right. in the Israeli basketball league, and uh, he was awesome to have on. And then we had and another. And he played player. the league in scoring from time to time right. this year. As he was, he played for is it Natanya? The, the yeah, wow, very very impressive. Very impressive yeah, yeah, he he plays for Natanya. Uh, he's trying to make a transition out of the Euro League, which is you know more competitive. Uh, but yeah, he's a great guy. He's very, very big in the community, and Atani, they love him there. Uh, he, he's head of a, a thing, an organization is involved with a thing where he helps with kids a lot, and it's re- he's a really great guy. I really enjoyed having him on. Uh, the last thing I want to talk to you about is, again, back something related to Israel and related uh, to uh, Gilad Sharit, of course, who's such a big story, not even just in Israel, let's be honest, everywhere in the world. And I understand that the Memphis Grizzlies organization was uh, indeed in charge of helping Gilad Shadid get over uh, to the All-Star game with the help of uh, Arn Tellum. So could you tell our listeners out there? Well, I, I, was, I think they, so it, that's very nice you saying it overstates uh, our impact. Uh, Gilad was uh, coming to uh, the United States. He's a, he's a basketball junkie, the highest order, right. uh, and wanted right. to come to the All-Star game. and. Uh, a gentleman that I know and uh, a journalist in, in Jerusalem, a dear friend of mine, Tal Ben Ezra, uh, reached out and said, is there anything you can do to help? And uh, I simply passed the request on to Arn Callum, the American super agent, and he contacted uh, Adam Silver, uh, the deputy commissioner of the NBA, and uh, you know, they did the... Uh, they handed out the passes and the tickets to all the events, and I was fortunate enough to meet Gilad wow. uh, in Orlando. I had a brief meeting with him in hotel lobby, and that was a real thrill for me as someone who's uh, you know a supporter and, and, and in, of Israel and just has such love for the country. And I was just thrilled to play a very small part in you know, passing this request along, and it was it was just a, a real joy to see. Uh, the the excitement and uh, the, the enjoyment that he was taking out of All Star Weekend, um, and he just loved it and attended many events. And uh, you know we're happy to 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 assist him in any way possible uh, with uh, in his love of basketball and expanding on his love of the game. I mean I think that's that's great that he's such a huge fan, and we're, we're obviously huge fans of him and and are. Uh, we say our prayers every day that uh, he's back uh, in his homeland uh, with his family and out of captivity. Yeah, and you know what? It really meant a lot to the people of Israel. It was very big in the media here. There was a very, very famous picture. I don't know if you've seen it yet, of Omri Kaspi uh, next to uh, Gilad Shalit. And that picture is just really powerful. It was all over the media here, not just the sports media. It was on the front page of every newspaper. Uh, and they, I think they met at the All Star Game, or maybe not. They, oh yeah, of course they met uh, at the All Star Game, and that was a very uh, powerful moment. So, as an Israeli citizen, I'd, I'd like to thank you for uh, helping in that and being at least a part of that. Uh, well, it, it was a real honor uh, to get to meet Gilad, and uh, you know, again, he, he loves the game of basketball, and that's that's the beauty of this game. It's not just a competition, but. Uh, it, it's something that really binds people together, connects people uh, uh, of different ethnic groups and races and religions and nationalities. It's, it's a common worldwide language. You know, as you probably know, basketball is, on the participant level, is the number two sport in the world, only behind, as we call it, soccer, but I guess the rest of the world, football, not American football. Right. Uh, and and you, I, I've been fortunate enough in... And, and this is really probably the most satisfying part of my uh, my 25 plus year career in the NBA with seven different teams. I I have had NBA teams pay for me to travel over 20 countries and over 50 cities. And everywhere I've been in the world, you'll run in to individuals wearing NBA game jerseys of various players that uh, follow the league closely. I, I remember. Our, our commissioner, David Stern, I read a story. He was in Nepal on a family trip, and he goes in the Internet Cafe, and, and there's a young man in Nepal you know, wearing uh, uh, Michael Jordan jersey or you know one of our stars, Kobe Bryant, 
one of the players of that caliber and is uh, on the internet uh, on NBA.com looking up uh, information about his favorite teams and wow. players. Wow, that's, that's awesome. a great so, story. Uh, so the, the, the NBA is truly a global sport. Every year we have uh, roughly about 18% of our player base uh, is foreign-born, um, and our games are broadcast in over 40 languages and well over 200 countries. A truly, so truly, inc- truly a global game. Yeah, truly incredible. And just going back real quick to the Gilachi story, you know, uh, I was I was on the radio when he was released, and just anyone out there who you got to believe anything is possible when you see something like that. Because last summer he was in a hellhole captive, and then the following February he's in an All Star game in the NBA. So you know anything is possible. And as Raphael said, uh, thank you for your part in it. Uh, I. I'm sure you had a bigger part than you'd like to admit, but we hear a lot of humility from you, so thank you for that. And uh, we have to run. We have to end the program, but we certainly thank you for your time here on Lewis Live. The, again, the general manager of the Memphis Grizzlies, Chris Wallace, here on Lewis Live at IsraelSportsRadio.com. And good luck in the rest of the playoff series. And uh, we hope you win and move on in the playoffs. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure to be on your show. And uh, I'd like to say hello to all my friends in Israel. I look forward to returning uh to, to your country very soon. Absolutely. Thank and you. We, thank you, Chris. Yes, thank you, Chris. And we'd love to uh, have you back here in Israel and, and hopefully meet up and, and talk some basketball. It'll be a lot of fun.